Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to episode. Uh, I don't know. Uh, second, the second one. Do I do I count separately my prep episodes? I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't matter. How's it going, everybody? I'm gonna do my year four eighty eight prep. We played Pendragon on Monday, and it was super super fun. So now we're getting ready to rumble. I have everything open. Um, I'm gonna pretty much start from scratch here, and 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 we'll we'll get going. So this is gonna be a real slow moving game today. And I'm just going to be kind of uh, methodological, methodological about my process. And uh, as you see, things will be subject to change before Monday, like we did last time with the prep. Rearrangements, last minute edits, uh, reshoots, et cetera, et cetera, will be on the table. Let's just do some Pendragon. So first thing I do is I really play, I really spend a lot of time in my notes. Uh, so I'm going to start here. Like I write a little bit of a to-do list for things. Let me see if, if it will help if I zoom in. Uh, so the first things I want to do is uh, I have to do my 47 family events. Because we didn't roll those for our players. I need to create a bunch of solo events for our, our, our two players as well. Let's get ready to rumble. Let's do those things first here. So 47 family events. Uh, before we go to 488, I'll make a note about 48. I'll just make this be like a light blue till leave it there until I um, age everybody up. But I have to do some, some family some family roles for people. There we go. Okay. So, we have to roll some family conflict drama tables for both of our players. Family event. This will be for... Um, these are my notes first. Erwin. Erwin's first. So, Erwin family event. Birth in the family. So, my guess here. We have Gorthrin is dead. His brother. Mind Dog, Melangel, and Kibno. One of them has, has given birth. Let's roll a d3. Right? Yeah. And it'll just be in order as presented on the spreadsheet. One. Mind dog. Mind dog gave birth. He's a he's a a new cousin. Get a uh, a name. So let's do a D two. Uh one is um no wait, I got a better idea. NPC fool. And it's give me my presenting. They are male. Uh Quern. I don't have to use all the rest of this stuff. I just need their their one. So his name is Gwern. So come down here. Add a little baby. Hey Spoon. Zero. Mind Dog is at Vagon. So Guerin is also at Vagon. Vagon. Vagon is cool. Vagon's a um, real fortified city. One of the few castles in the area. And castles at this time aren't the stone castles that we know, except for Sarum. Uh, Sarum is actually one of the only stone uh, fortified cities. It also has earthworks, but Sarum is an old Roman construction, and that's why that's there. Uh, castles at this time are Mott and Bailey castles, so they use a lot of earth and then a lot of, like, palisades. So I'm going to say... Mine... I can never spell mine dog's name. I don't know who the mom is. Mounds and ditches and earthworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this. This is the distill. Right? This kind of stuff. I think I, I have a picture of it in... um. I have a picture in like the stuff that cycles 
this is the general style. More realistic Rohan from the Lord of the Rings movie. Exactly. You nailed it. Cool. So we're gonna go back to our notes. So we did just we're just doing our family events. So we just did Mind Dog. I'm gonna make a note. Just these will be the first kind of announcements that I make in the game. And let's roll for Gareth. Okay, also a birth in the family. Gareth has, looking by the arms. I do. Oops. Wellis. Herador is dead. Raid. No, I have the wrong, I have the wrong, uh, oh crap, I have the wrong, uh, thing for him, but wrong cut of arms. That's fine. These are the right. Okay, so, Wellis. Oh, I can't sort by image. Oh, that's, that's sad. Uh, let's do sort. Huzzah, look at that filtering. One, two, three, four. Um, so D4. One. Again. That's Gwellis. That's, that's his uncle. It's... So let's do another NPC. Ooh, a male. Eldred. Let's go back to all. Uh, let's see. Wellis is currently living in Woodford. Okay. Cool. Family events. Shift five. It's done. Solo event generation. Oh, shit. Uh, I didn't copy and paste the notes. There we go. Oh, I should also post. Uh, this is just for my own stuff. Uh, Erwin is modest. Gareth is, I think, energetic. Energetic is 16. Yes. Uh, I should also write down what their passions are when they're higher than 16, so I know those as well. Uh, passions are under skills, right? Standard stats. Ah, there they are. Honor is 19 and hospitality is 16. Honor 19. Hospitality 16. Then let's look at Erwin's passions. This is just for me to think about when it comes to playing the game, right? Uh, these are just things that I, I want to keep in mind. So anything that's notable about my player characters, their characters. I want to uh, think about it as I prep. Oh, look at that. Three of them. Loyalty, hospitality, and hatred of Saxons. What a boss. This <laughs> honors 13. Loyalty, 17. Hospitality, 16. And hate, hatred of Saxons. Sick. 
So of notes, Uncle Mind Mind Dog had a baby, and Gwellis had a baby. Let's do some solo event gen. So let's start with Erwin. Erwin's just at the top of the list here. So uh keep that in mind. I need to make some extra things. Unless I already did it. I'm thinking about the weather and winter phase events. I already put down what it is going to be next year. I did. Oh, God. 17. That's really bad for them. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We'll fill out the rest of this. I just wanted to make sure I already rolled weather because I already did that now. But I already did it. I need to make a checklist for myself. Uh, that's to do. do. For me, make a checklist of yearly prep things to do. Okay, and that'll just carry with me. That'll be with me forever. Uh, ben, you asked, uh, do, does Ben Dragon have rules about the stats of, of the children? No. Um, it doesn't have stats for children, except for uh, you roll a d20 to see if they survive. Which, you know what? Let's just do it right now. My dog had a baby. An infant on a one or two, they're dead. They're fine. Uh, now Eldred. 14. They're fine. They made it. They have healthy baby boys. All right. Solo event time. Yeah. 10% mortality rate for the first one is pretty good. And every, the rest of the year is like what? Uh, if you roll a one, there's a 5% chance. And then... There's a 5% chance and then a 5% chance for a 1 to 25 is a 20% chance. So what's 20% of 5%? 1%. There's a 1% chance. There's a 1% chance your child dies. And the way we do it is we don't do it till 21. We do it until they're 7. So... Whatever 1% chance to die times 7 is, that's the odds of death. Because it's 99%, 1 minus 99% of 19, 7 times. You have a question about those tables? What's up? I love it. Child is 121 and women is 15 to 40. Yes. Uh, that's because, well, if your child's a if your child's a woman, then that's that's the table they go on, and 15. Uh, the 121 is just I think it's just a general. Um, I think this is fan made. I don't know, or maybe it's ripped out of a book of the estate. But yeah, I I hear you when you say that there is overlap. Um, I would go with specific Trump's general. So if you're a woman at 15 years of age, you would roll in this table. Yeah, totally. It's a good question. All right. This is why I write to do this for myself because I never remember what I'm supposed to be doing right now. 488, solo event generation. All right. So this was probably going to go under spring. Depends on what we roll. Uh, this sort of takes the spot for kind of like what our winter or like so events are. I like to pre-generate a, a little a small event that's personal to each character. Um, so what I do is I have a massive, massive table made by, I think, someone named Sir Mad Monkey who designed this stuff. And now we get to roll a d20. This is a d20 for Irwin's solo event. So let's roll that. 17. A 17 is bad fortune. Of course it is. Or <laughs> Good job, Irwin. So uh, that one is 39. The way you read the table is, I'm not sure if you can read it. I have to zoom in a lot. Um, do you see how there's a number associated with the bold? This refers to the name of the, this is the title of the table. And 39 is the numeric subtable, so you can track them together. So I look for table 39 down here. Erwin is a landed knight, so I add 10 to this roll. 28. Fortification demand. Minus one. Oh, cool. So something broke. Uh, 
Uh, no, I rolled a 17. Something at Cholderton gets fucked up. Yeah, some, something of the defensive posture of Cholderton's broken. I mean, obviously they were pillaged, right? They were pillaged last fall. So I think it reveals that there is uh, structural damage in a way that needs to get fixed. Yeah, and Dula Hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe the Dula Hand strikes again. Minus one to uh, conflict battle tables, battle rolls. Yeah. Um, obviously, it, it can't be the earthworks. It's got to be some of the some of the wood. Sick. Okay. Um, oops. Go this way. Erwin. Right, Gareth. Gareth got a nine. What does nine tell us on the table? Relations, thirty-six. He is wed to roll chaste or love of life. He is going to be rolling chaste. Doing relations again. Of course, Gareth rolls relations again. Ah, it's always relations. Bumble's tragedy. Fail something else. Flirt, joy, bliss. Maybe I should just copy what I did last time. Okay. Um, let's roll. Let's do these recursive tables. Um, you for uh, was it a building, a gate? Yeah, a, a gate could totally have done it. Building inside the fort. I like the idea of a gate or a door of some kind. I'll do that. Um, a portcullis. Yes, I know a portcullis. Wondering if there was... Barbican. There it is. Barbican. That's what I'm looking for. Gate math's fucked up. Okay, back to back to relations. Tragedy fifty one. I roll a d six. Her love becomes hate. Uh, okay. That's extremely fair. Flirt. Throw each of the subtables and see what you get with the chase roll. Uh, so if you succeed at the chase roll, you're done. You don't have to. Uh, you sorry, you're not done. You you go to one of these subtables. Yes, it's all recursive. Sorry, but you are right. So now I would look at the fail. The result of the chase roll determines whether you're. Going to a tragedy, flirt, joy, or bliss. So if you fail the chase roll, you don't critically fail, just regularly fail, you do the flirt. And if I recall correctly, flirts are like a skill challenge. Where's my flirts? There you are. Yep, flirt, app, sing. I think I have it down here.
Is it under spring events? Winter, spring. Yep, okay. This is what I was looking for. I'm just going to copy. What is this? After a fair. Oh, that's the luck table. Is that the luck table? So you're you're asking if if he gets three successes he can choose to have an affair. Yes. Uh this actually happened last session. Soon. Uh oh. No. No Windows update. Nope, nope, nope. You're not you're not restarting on me. Not like this. Sorry, I just want to make sure my computer doesn't restart midstream. Restart at 10.30 tonight, not 6.30. Okay. Price is averted. Sorry about that. Okay, so what I was saying last session is Gareth actually had this exact same relations event again, where uh, Gareth had to flirt and only succeeded at two of them, so they actually had an affair. And by having an affair, they had a successful discreet affair, and they earned 50 glory for it. That's pretty cool. So that's what happens when you fail. I feel like I need to do this better. No. Oh, Kelso, thank you. Welcome. That means the joy table is also done for me. This is all done for me last year by me on stream. Oh, I think I have to roll for Bliss and Joy, actually. So I don't think I get to get to do them. Let's do Bliss. Joy. Joy. If you have love of wife, they don't. They yep, they they would gain love for gain love wife. Passion. Oh, no, 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 wait, wait, it's not love of life. You will gain love of who you're flirting with. There we go. And now bliss. 
That's right. VM prep. Yep. We are we're prepping the Pren Dragons. Let's do some bliss. Bliss is right here. They don't have love and they don't have a mutual love, but they are happily married. Four, gain five free servants. Cool. You haven't been watching Ben Dragon, but Eric's so hype about it. You want to learn more? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I keep talking about it. I keep talking about it. It's one of the best games I've ever ran and played. Easily. I don't shut up about it. I know. Now I got Dr. Wreckage on it, too. He's, he's super into it. It just keeps going. All right, so solo events are done. Uh, so right now, we we formulated what Erwin's going to have to deal with, the fort damage, right? Like, we we took care of that. Um, we know that Gareth... We don't exactly know the, the context of this relations table, but I think it's going to be uh, that, that boy toy he has. Um, what's his name? Eleanor? Where's his name? So many roles. Anir yeah, An Anirian. That's right. Thank you. I'm just going to write that down. I'm going to use the way you spell it. Uh, the problem here is the reason why I don't remember it is because he's not in the Pendragon tables. Sure. That's not how you spell it, but that's fine. They are alive. Uh, I think he's a he, him. Let's say it's a 1d20 plus... 1d12 plus 20. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, he's 28. Got to be going on 29, because we're going to 48, so he's 29 now. I'm gonna make him in. He's from Love, Love, uh, Love Comagus. Comagus. Uh, boy toy of Gareth. Little note to myself. This is how this thing slowly gets ticked up. Oh, you know what? I need to make him actually 28. But the reason why I'm doing that, all right, everybody. The reason why I'm putting 28 instead of 29 is that I haven't, I haven't updated anybody for the current year. My process is that when this turns black, then I know I remember I remember to update everyone's ears. And so I haven't done it yet. So I'm not going to touch anyone's ears until I, I do it for everybody in one fell swoop. Yep, it's another visit by um, Anirian. That's, that's Garrett's event. Yeah, uh, some, sort of, some, some sort of checklist of prep things to do. Um, okay, so this is all here. This is all from last year. This is okay. So the solo event's done. Um, I need to do solo events for other people before I start fleshing out the rest of the year. So this is the fun part. We get to repeat the solo event stuff that we just did for as many nights on this here as we want. So I think what we're going to do here is... um. Let's roll randomly. Um, do you know how to get a random result from a table or from a from a list? Like if you give it an array of, of names, do you know how to get a random one? Random number between one top rank of value and between. Yeah, it's not that I want to. I mean, I'll I'll just roll it. What I wanted to do was be able to like make a function call that, that grabs everything from here who's alive and uh, roll from there. So let's just do... Only knights who are alive. I have 
28. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, cool. It's for Fraid. It's Fraid. We haven't seen Fraid in a while. Cool, Fraid. What's up, buddy? Um, Fraid, you had a 45% chance of raiding last year. You went raiding. Or you didn't go raiding. It's 45 or under would be raiding. So you went. Sir Fraid got glory going with Uther to Lindsay. That's dope. Um, let's see what else you got into this year, buddy. The 20 event. 12. 12. Our relations. Sir Fraid is married. So, Sir Fraid, we will do a chaste. Uh, I have some stats for Fraid set up. So let's test his chaste. Fumble! Oh no! Oh no! Oh! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh! Oh no! That's a tragedy! That's a tragedy! Oh, this is why I play this game. This is so good. What table is tragedy? Tragedy, 51. All right, 39, 42, 51. Tragic table, D6. A one. She becomes a nun. Each year you roll a D20 until you remain married. Oh my God. Oh my God. They, what happened? Erwin's gonna be, oh my God, Spoon. I'm so, ha yes. Yes, this is, this is the shit. How do, like, seriously, seriously, everybody. I could never in a million years be as smart enough to come up with a plot like this. So ever so backstory in case in case all of this is you have no idea why me and Spoon right now are just completely getting out right now. Erwin the Sir Fraid's wife right now is Erwin's love. Like literally like literal has a trait about being in love with them. They were they were there at a more like starting out in 485. That they were the person they wanted to marry, and they fumbled. They fumbled their flirting test twice, twice fumble like like a natural like. That's impossible. Natural twenty twice. That's so so rare. That's a like one in four hundred chance. How do you? Uh, so 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 afraid. So so afraid was the rival, and so afraid married, married them. And so this whole time he's had to like put up with other people to marry. He had the worst luck in the light life in forever, and now the person that he's actually in love with. Becomes a nun. Oh my god. This is just the start. How does he how does Jim how does Jim even handle this? This is this is phenomenal. This is absolutely phenomenal. Holy fuck. Alright, I gotta put it down here. That's this is this is the this is the start of an actual proper adventure. This is this is no joke. This is no bullshit. Uh, this is going to be part of summer of springtime's adventure, I think for Irwin. Oh my God. Um, I need to, I need to write that down. Um, that's means I need to get everyone who's alive. That's fine. Keep everyone who's alive. Uh, but select everybody because I need grade. Grade. Um, she was super chaste too. That's so funny. Um, let me see what happened to grade this year, actually. Let me do a survival um, to see if she gave birth. Let's see if she rolled birth. Uh, she gives birth on a d20. 15. She did. Okay. Uh, baby. Is another male knight. God damn. I've rolled male for, for three for three here. Baby. Oh, let's see if the baby survives. Yep, baby's baby's crushing it. Good job, baby. So I have it set up to be um gender ambiguous, male and female are even. They're all even in this in this in this pattern. It just so happened I rolled three males. Um God damn, this is so fucking funny. 
This is so good. This is so good. So Id Idmiston is his uh, Kaput Mons. His head household. Um, by the way, the proper way of describing Sir Freyd's uh, coat of arms is a argent base with a rampant purple cock. It's, it's awesome. Shield language. Shield lingo is real good. Sir Freyd's boy. And what undid. Actually, I may... Okay. I think I have to roll. So Sir Freyd clearly... Cheated on him. Sir Freyd cheated. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. And he, he confesses to it. Obviously. Sir Freyd of all people have an affair. Because it was a moment of... of he... I, he really fumbled his chastity. That's how. Uh, now, let's see if it's lustful. Uh, I'll, I'll test Sir Freyd's lustful. If Sir, um, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to test their lustful. If their lustful is fucked up, then we know. They succeeded at their lustful test. So they are, they are led by their lust. So I think they do have an affair. They cheat with somebody. I don't think, I think Sir Freyd will never admit who it was. I think this is a big deal. Um, oh boy, this is, this is the goss. This is the gossip. Oh my God. Yeah, right? Exactly, Spoon. You got it. That's, that's it. Um, Sir Freyd. He admits it to his wife. Freyd. Doesn't reveal who. It happened during the embassy trip. Oh my god. Ah, oh, this is so goddamn good. I I can't I I'm not gonna tell Jim what I rolled, but I'm gonna let Jim know right now that there's some bullshit happening. I'm just, I'm saying I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> RNG hates you. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Oh my god. Oh my god. Y'all, should I tell him? Should I tell him right now? Can I tell him? Or should, I, should it be a surprise? Should it be a surprise for stream? Save, save it for Monday. I'll save it for Monday. Yep, yep, yep. Oh my god. Role playing games, everybody. Uh the stuff down here, by the way, this is all uh also for Irwin. I need to I need to reincorporate. So Spoon, you're saying that's what I'm thinking, uh it's we challenge Sir Frey like an honor duel or something? Yeah, it's totally possible. It's that's totally on the table. And then his like oh man, so think about it. Think about it right now. Um, so like Erwin right now is getting more and more on the religious side of, of his sort of pagan stuff where he's finding some peace there. Um, he's trying to just keep moving forward. Um, and he, and, and then all of a sudden this event happens that I think might suck him back. Uh, and then what does Colwyn do with that? I know. I don't know what Colwyn does, Spoon. Um, like they don't like Colwyn and Erwin don't really love each other. 
Uh, Colwyn just wants to be a knight and doesn't really want to be a steward, and they don't have a choice. Um, does that does that conspire to be like, are you going to convince Lady Grade to not be a nun? But then, do, are you going to divorce? Like, Colwyn would... I don't think Colwyn would accept a divorce unless Colwyn could somehow become a knight for someone else. Like, like if there's a way... Colwyn is Orwin, Orwin's wife, yes. So, like, if Orwin could devise a way for Colwyn to somehow kind of disappear and become a knight for somebody, then maybe. And be like, I don't know, my wife's missing. My partner's gone. I don't know. Uh, and maybe, like... But then, does does Erwin live with that? Will Lady Grade buy that? I don't know. That's so good. That's so good. Oh my god. All oh, the games. This isn't. This is just fucking. Oh my god. This is real good. Uh, I'm not gonna. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna do you do a draw dot if. I'm not gonna draw it out. It's, just, it's too much for me at this moment. But I hear you. All right, uh, let's go back and do some more um, more solo event roulette. Uh, living, living knights only knights. Um, let's not include frayed. So I think it's a twenty-seven, right? Yep, twenty-seven. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tinger. Okay. Well, here you have it. Another another night uh, that we've seen a little bit of. Let's see what Tinger got up to. Let's see what bullshit. A uh, Tinger is the big football energy guy who got drunk at a feast, and then we didn't really uh, hear much about him. It's hard to kind of manage everybody, to be honest with you, and like remember what exactly happened all the time and bring people on screen. But having sort of these random events and recording them. Helps me out a lot. Uh, so when they do come back on screen, I can describe what they've been up to. Uh, oh, let me roll Tinger. 45% uh, chance to see if Tinger went on the raid. <laughs> and I roll 46. <laughs> Fucking Tinger. Oh, man. Okay. Poor Tinger. Uh, Tinger does not go on the raid. Tinger is literally getting dragged by Sir Freyd and everyone else up on the embassy trip. I think like, Navi, go! Navi, go! <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh boy. Okay. Um so I roll a two. Good fortune. Tinger is a landed knight. Fourteen. Roll toll gift of one dollar yearly. Um Where is Tinger's house? Tinger, where are you, buddy? Tinger is Berwick St. James. So I'm looking for the weird, like, almost Jamaican flag symbol. Oh, there it is. This is, this is Tinger's. Tinger's here. There must be some sort of uh, passageway but over, the, over the little river. Oh, man. Okay. That's fucking sick. Okay. Uh, so, Tinger. Berwick. St. James. Small. Ferry. That's easy. Nothing, nothing too big there. Um, let's roll again. 26. 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18. This happens to Erwin Squire. I don't have a Squire option. I need to, I need to adjust this thing. Uh, I can't accept. I can't accept those two. 
So what happens to Glessig the Pious? Uh, you're going to be 1d20 plus 12. 31. Glessig the Pious. What do you get into? Sixteen's bad. Bad fortune. Thirty-nine. Uh, Glessig is a landed knight. Glessig. What do you have? You literally got a thirty. Neighbor blood feud. Yeah, exactly. So he set up a um. Inger set up a a some sort of like fairy situation. Is making a little bit of money a year off of it. But hot damn, uh, this knight, who we never even heard of, has now blood feud. So let's look for Ember. Uh, there's a lot of, I mean, the names do overlap with one another. My name table isn't that big. My, yeah, my female Kimrick name is only 23. That's pretty sad. I need to add to that. I'm going to do that right now. No, 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 no. I gotta keep what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna do this after I finish what I'm doing. Um, I need to look at Logris. I need to figure out where the hell Ember is. I think it's to the south. Maybe I'm totally off base. There's Ember. There's a blood feud with a rival? You don't have anyone around you! <laughs> add names. Add names to the names list. Thank you. You're right. They clearly do hate people, but they have a blood feud. I guess the closest person is one of these two, Little Cheverfell and Wes Lavington. So let's roll a D2. Number one is Lavington, and number two is Cheverell. All right, so Wes Lavington. Who lives in Wes Lavington? Wes Lavington, born and raised. Uh, I don't have a knight for Wes Lavington. Time to roll up a new one. I don't even have Wes Lavington in here. Yeah, of course I don't. I'm gonna have to add this, I redo the data validation. That's fine. So this is the knight who lives there. I don't. Th I think West Lavington's technically a holding of. West Lavington is going to be a holding of Roderick. So they're not a landed knight. They're just a housed knight. You want to name them? Uh, sure, Kelsa. I have to roll up. I have to come up with names anyway. So if you have a name for them, give, give it. Give it to me. Uh, and so. Uh, Oh, you know what I also need? Uh, book of Knights and Lane. Does that have a name? I don't know. Cool, cool, cool. So that doesn't help. Madgerie. I like Madgerie. That's a good name. Madgery. Okay, one second. Is this gender table?
They literally have the same weight. Okay, I've just rolled a one on this table then, like six times in a row. Okay. Um, so we're ignoring all of that stuff. So they look lovely and strange, and they're super modest. But they also love boating. And they're super pagan. <gasps> and Glessig is super pious. That's fucked up. Oh, we got some... Okay. All right. Okay. Let's do this. E20 plus 12. Six. Sorry for jumping around. Best. Slavington. I'm going to put in here, um, their big trait that they have is pious. Okay, maybe not. Um, boating. Modest. Modesty is the other one. Modest. 18 and modest. 17 and modest. 17 and modest. Boating is an 18. Wicked Pagan, current Blood Feud, with the, uh, the Knight of Ember, Glessig. That's so fucking awesome. Okay, it's cool. Now we got Glessig the Pious. Marjorie. Marjorie, such a good name. Cool. Uh, let's see. Let's see what shit Marjorie got into. Maybe the shit that Marjorie got into will explain the blood feud. So, uh, D twenty. Oh, let's do the forty five percent. Oh, Marjorie went raiding last last year. Awesome. Marjorie was part of the crew that uh, raided the Saxons. Um, so let's do D20. An enemy. Hmm. 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 Okay. 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 Okay, game. All right. Sometimes the tables help you out. A revenge. A deed done. So they did something. One, uh, a servant. Okay. So, Glessig the pious' servant did something. It's where? One, in, at their house. They hate you. To the death. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. This is again. This is some fucking murder. She wrote shit. Okay. Glessig the pious has a blood feud. Glessig, Glessig's servant, um, insulted Marjorie. Their manner. Did they fucking break hospitality? Did did Glessig's servant do something that's worth breaking hospitality over? This is this is the adventure. This is this is the seasonal adventure. This is this is the shit that I want in this game so badly. So so badly. Being like Roderick is just doing this all day long, just being like how do I get my knights from for, stop to stop fighting each other? I have two knights who are going to who are swearing to kill each other, and like just don't 
Just ma- don't. Just make it stop. <laughs> oh my god. This is yeah, right? This is a this is this is why this is why this is such a big deal. Um because you don't break hospitality. Uh I'll bring it up in the book. I'll show you in the book what they talk about hospitality. But like hospitality is hospitality. Um Hot damn. And the question then is, did they actually break hospitality? Um, I think that's the interesting question here. I need to really read about hospitality now. All right, here we go. This passion measures how much a character respects a, a time-honored institution of, pa- of hospitality. A proponent of this practice feels bound to correct others' inhospitable behavior and perhaps even seek out and destroy those who break the rules. On the hand, anyone with disregard is like to steal. Whenever a character's behavior warrants that the hospitality should be altered. Okay. Um, obviously, this is, this is the answer. Oh, my God. Erwin does have a 16 in hospitality. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, because he crit, he crit his hospitality last year. He crit, and so, um, he's, so I think Roderick was so impressed that he needs them to, to do it. Yeah, exactly. Spoon, I love you. Thank you. This is so good. Oh my god. This freaking game is incredible. Oh my god. Okay. We really have to craft the, Okay. Okay. In the manner. Um, Marjorie believes the servant broke the rules of hospitality and slew them. I need a servant name. Uh, male or female name. Male. So, male Kimrick name. Did I just roll the same name again? Eldred? How is it possible? I have 135 names. No, Eldred's not on this list. No, it is. Eldred. God damn. Come on. Deffy. There we go. Oh my god. Yeah, Alfred is um uh, Mind Dog's new kid, new baby. Well it says. Garrett's uncles. Jesus Christ, this game. Okay, so Marjorie believes the servant broke the rules of hospitality and slew Deffy. Gleswick maintains the servant did nothing wrong. Okay, so Glesig maintains the servant did nothing wrong, and thus Marjorie broke hospitality. Um, let's let's get into this. Uh, let's 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 get into this. Glesig's servant, Deffy, insulted Marjorie in their manner. What does this look like? How? What what is the cause of the offense? Let's look at justice for maybe some um, ideas. Adulterer. An exchange of verbal insults. Okay. Um, so the source of this exchange was an exchange of verbal insults. So it was a heated argument. A heated argument. Um, what was it about? What was the heated argument about? What was the context? Uh, adultery. Um, okay. Yeah, Spoon, that's what I'm thinking, too. I'm thinking that a it, it, heated argument about the nature of adultery. What were the specifics they were arguing about? 
Why would they break hospitality? What does breaking... Were they, is that stealing something? A special hell. Um... It has to be something that's ambiguous. I'm fine with the player solving it fast, though. That's actually not a problem. But I see what you mean. Um, okay. So, hospitality was broken. Spidium. Uh, some get some references. Uh, strangers were regarded as being the protection of Zeus. This isn't what I need. For pilgrims. Sacred hospitality. <laughs> trying to figure out what the hell this is. Filling over for dinner situations. It's usually a difficult dilemma. No, uh, that's not what I need. I need. I just need the context of adultery and why someone would break hospitality. Regarding one second marriage. Hmm. Is. I don't know if Marjorie has been married. Marjorie is thirty three, twenty six. No, nah, they've they've almost definitely been married. Who did they marry? Let's make a night. Let's make a night. Ooh, okay. They married a non-binary steward. They were Christian. Maybe regarding one second marriage or a marriage being to a widow or a widowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um This was about um Marjorie's partner, Melangel, Melangel. Something happened to Melangel? Are they dead? I think they're dead. They speak ill of them. Maybe regarding one second marriage. Right. Um, Marjorie's second partner is considered inappropriate. Yeah, I mean, that would that's definitely that's grounds for I mean, to kill someone now. Like to kill someone. Um
Right, the point is that Marjorie felt sufficiently insulted and Glessig disagrees. Maybe Glessig doesn't disagree. Maybe, maybe Glessig is bound to do it because their servant was killed. And that even complicates things. I mean, I mean, one, one way to take the second partner thing would obviously be like, maybe, I don't know. I mean, like the one, like one answer could be like, they think it's inappropriate that that steward, like Glessig didn't marry someone who is more masculine. And so they, they talk, they spoke down about their second partner. Um, I don't know. We could go down that route. I don't have pronouns for classic. Wait, no. I, yeah, it's totally blank. Okay. So. NPC fool. Never mind. They're non-binary. Awesome. Classic. Interesting. Right. I think it's something taboo. I would love for this to be more religious based. Um, about adultery and religion. So the second partner um, is considered inappropriate and Christian, but legitimate and pagan. Um, maybe. I mean, how about I'm just going to fucking what if I just did it? What if what if Marjorie? What if Marjorie has two partners? What if what if they're a polycule? Yeah, that's the answer. They're, in a, they're a polycule, and they think this is, that's adultery. And you're insulting, you're, you're insulting, holy shit. Yeah, because then you're insulting, like, the host. Yeah, yeah, of course. And you're saying illegitimate. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is good. This is real good. Okay, this is the play. Uh, let's come up with who their second partner is. A female knight named Lilo. Sick. Okay. <laughs> She's super lustful. <laughs> you see that, y'all? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh. This is so good. I love this game. Thank you all for being here and hanging out. I super appreciate this. Um, okay, okay. So here here it is. Um Insulted Marjorie in the Manor. Um disapproving of Marjorie's Multiple partners. Marjorie is in a polycule with Melangel, Steward, and B. Oh, I didn't even write down anything for them yet. Steward, wiry, athletic, and hella suspicious. They love their family. Of course they do. Super suspicious. Lilo? Yeah, it was Lilo, right? Lilo. Uh, Lustful. Okay, okay. So let's 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 continue this. Um, this is good. This is good shit. Um, one party is super suspicious of everything. The other one is super lustful. No problems there. Yeah. Um. Have you given out more long distance nights? I have not given out any more long distance nights. Although I feel like he, uh, I feel like Kelsa is making a pretty good argument that if Kelsa wanted to play Marjorie, 
Um, I'd be cool with that. So like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, so what was the insult? Like, do I need to know the specifics of the insult? I feel like if they're going to investigate this, they need to know. And then I guess this answers the question of, um, So, so the thing that I'm looking at right now, right, is what happens. So Roderick has approved this, right? Or maybe Roderick doesn't know. The servant won't let all three of them into the same room. Yeah, they wouldn't let him in the same room. Maybe, did the servant like steal the keys? To the place in a way to like stop it. They're blackmailed. Yeah, they were in a polycule. No, that's what it is. They were in a polycule and they found out. This is this is the story. No, this is this is the mystery. The mystery is that they're in a polycule. The problem is that the servant found out and they killed they killed him. Because they didn't want this broken up. Because that challenges and they would lose their house probably. Because that throws legitimacy of their heirs like super out. So they did it. They did to cover it up. That's what it is. That's why. Uh, Glessig, Glessig doesn't know why. Uh, Glessig doesn't know why Marjorie won't tell the truth. Um, but Gle like Glessig, like, think of it the morning of like you wake, Glessig waking up. Uh, Vivaldi's spring is playing, and your your trusted uh, aide is dead at this manner, um, and they won't tell you why. Um, yeah, that's the answer. That's the answer. Okay. Um, Deffy found out about the polycule. Um. Somebody of the polycule tried to... Which of the three in the polycule actually did the killing? I think the best answer is to roll randomly. Or maybe it was suspicious. I mean, Melangel... Melangel's hella suspicious. Maybe maybe they're the one who caught them. Marjorie? Marjorie did the killing? Yep, okay. So, Melangel... Uh, Melangel discovered... Deffy knew... Did Deffy try to blackmail him? Deffy definitely blackmailed him. Def Deffy definitely tried to blackmail him. Deffy tried to blackmail Melangel. Melangel discovered Delphi knew uh, was the blackmailer. And he was killed for it. Yeah. Um... And then Melangel must have told Marjorie. Melangel told Marjorie who killed Duffy. Fix the problem. Um, and of course she's doing it. Of course, of course Marjorie's doing this because Marjorie's a knight. And this is Marjorie's honor at stake. We got a murder mystery on our hands. This is some fucking murder, murder thou script. Yes, I'm into it. I'm into this so much. This is so much fun. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, this is the adventure. This is this is what we're doing today. This is what we're doing next week. Uh I am because I'm I am slowing the game down. Um this this session will be only spring and summer. And uh, and this is going to be the beginning. Like all the stuff we're doing right now is all the beginning Mason Plus stuff of the year. Um this happens after the feast. This, this has to happen after the feast. So I need to write down this year's feast, Easter feast. But that's fine. This is super good. This is, this is the shit that you all, I'm so happy you're all on this journey with me right now. Because I wouldn't be able to do this on my own. And you all just like help me figure this shit out. This is amazing. So we have Sir Fred's affair and Lady Grade becoming a nun. 
and that whole shindig going down again about adultery this whole year is fucking adultery it's 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 a, it's it's amazing this is absolutely amazing i got to go moderate okay no problem spoon thanks for hanging out buddy uh no problem catch the vod or just just come over this is yeah this is great i i appreciate everything oh my god this game i am i am so happy i am so happy about this game this is this is the deal. Uh, so this Marjorie again is the what is the name of the manor? Manor is Ember. No, it's West Lavington. So the murder happens in West Lavington. But they have to travel through Tilsed. God, this is so fucking good. This is so good. See, this whole time, I was thinking about doing some shit with Love Camagus and stuff and Silchester and doing all the shit over here. But, get that. We're doing, we're, we're, in, we're in juicy, spicy town over here. This is great. Okay. Um, so, we remove this part. Um, well, we, it's... Uh, Deffy, uh, Glessig's servant, find out about the polycure relationship, caught them in the act, uh, no, I, I caught, read the letters, it's indirect, because catching them in the act isn't enough, um, people just deny that shit, right, especially at night. They're they're honor. Who cares? They'll they'll just lie, because they're protected. So there has to be some sort of incriminating letter. Um, Deffy uh, has a copy of the letter. Deffy tries to blackmail Melangel. Melangel's like fuck no. Melangel informs Marjorie. Marjorie goes to deal with Deffy, and Deffy ends up dead. The question is, did Marjorie kill Deffy? Did Marjorie actually kill Deffy? I'm back on this shit. I'm sorry. I'm like going back thinking it through. Did Marjorie kill Deffy? Did Deffy die like is it like an accident? Or was this committed? Let's let's roll let's roll let's roll up Melangel's shit. Uh that's the question. Um let's roll up Melangel. Uh, so Melan uh excuse me, Marjorie's character. Because this is too important to not know. Uh, no, nobody's journals, just me. Um, so they have one stat in that's super high, and we already did that. Marjorie is boating and modest. So their modest is seventeen. Um, we don't know what their other stats are, but we do know that they're pagan. And when you're pagan, that means you have a 13 and a bunch of stats. I just don't know what they are. Here it is. Sorry. Sorry for having to zoom in and shit all the time. Uh, generous, energetic, honest, lustful, and proud. The rest of the, those are all 13s. So generous. Energetic. Lustful. And proud. Well, okay. Uh, that's supposed to be a 13. But nope, their modesty is that. So they're not proud. Um, so why, why is this... Shit. Um, was it Lilo? Lilo has a love of family, and they're Christian, and she sh has sh bold hair. She's bald and really cute. Hey, Arberlin, we're dealing with a murder mystery. Nice, nice to come in here, buddy. Um, we're dealing with a murder mystery between a polycule 
it's uh it's real good um Manjo told Marjorie about Duffy <sighs> Marjorie and Melangel told Lilo together did Lilo convince Marjorie to do it? Yeah. Lilo convinced Marjorie to eat. All right. Lilo is a knight, yes. So Lilo is totally on the table to be the, um, the one who killed them. No, this wasn't an assassination. This was definitely not assassination. This was just pure, um, just murder. What are the physical descriptions of the others? Lilo is bold and cute. Um, Melangel... Melangel is wiry and athletic. And... Well, I, I rolled Melangel twice. That's fucking wild. Okay. Um, lovely and strange is uh, Madri. Uh, how you can be? How can you be wiry and large? Is because um, the table just rolls randomly, and it doesn't care that they're contradictions. So this is faith. Spirituality is super high. Um, I think I think Marjorie kills Deffy. I don't think did Lilo. The, here's the question: Did Lilo want Marjorie to kill them? Or does Marjorie think Lilo once told them to kill them? And now everyone has to be like tight, tight knit. I think this is fine. Um, this is fine. Glessig is in a blood feud with Marjorie. So Marjorie has to be the one who killed them. Marjorie confesses to killing them, but won't tell why. What is the honorable resolution to this? Uh, the honorable resolution is that Glessig and Marjorie fight. Uh, and you you actually kind of don't intercede. That's the honorable solution. Um, the other honorable solution is to admit that monogamy is bullshit. But this is this is the fucking Age of Uther. This is trial by combat. Marjorie is very modest, and it's about adultery. So what if Deffy caught the three of them together in bed, but the insult was about some scar in Marjorie's naked body? I think the letter referred to it. I think the letter refers to that. Because remember, Deffy has a letter. Like it's 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 not so much that Deffy saw them. Because if you just saw them, like that's bad. But like that's deniable. You're a servant, and as a servant, you don't have rights in this world. If you're not a knight, if you're not a noble, if you're not an esquire, you don't. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Um, you're nobody will take your case, unless you get a knight or somebody to take your case. So like, unless Glessig trusts that Deffy knew something. Um, does I don't think what. So what happened to the letter? Here's the question. What happened to the letter? Does Glessig have the letter? 
a scarlet letter. <laughs> Does is the letter is the letter destroyed? I imagine Marjorie and them would destroy the letter. Alternative, does Glessic have the letter? They would destroy the letter if they got a hold of it. Yes. So the question, so the thing that they're you're trying to solve in this adventure is do you realize, do you find the letter before they do? The problem, the problem is that Deffy hid the letter. And so that if they, so is the logic here is that if they shut up and they find the letter and then they duel, it's fine. If Marjorie and Lilo haven't found the letter and are actually trying to lean on the players to find it. Yeah. Um, here's the thing, though. They're willing to kill. They're willing to kill over keeping the, the knowledge of their polycule secret. They're not going to say, here's the knowledge of the polycule. Don't tell anyone and expose themselves to that. Um, yeah, we're super in dogs in the vineyard territory. Um, I agree that they haven't found the letter. Who knows where the letter is? That means they're also willing to be very loyal to someone who would find the letter and keep it secret. Yes, it would be. Um, Well, I think the answer then, I think, I think the cool answer isn't where the letter is. I think the cool answer is, is the players have the letter. You're right. I mean, that's the answer. The answer is that the cool, the cool question is the players have the letter. How did the, how did they get the letter? Right? Like, that's the answer. The answer is that they have the letter. Um, what do you do with it? This is what's going on. Yeah, Merlin. I mean, Merlin procure, gives him the letter. I mean, Merlin gives him the sword. I feel like that's really high up for Merlin. The letter was mailed because it would keep a secret. Like all things that make no sense, Merlin just gives them a letter and is like, hey guys, make the right choice. I mean, that's definitely one of them. Can one of the players owe the servant one? Well, it could definitely be a test wreckage. I hear you on that. Um, I was thinking Roderick was sending them to solve this problem. Because Roderick is like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I have two knights like her willing to kill each other. And that's, that's I just don't have time for that. And so they're given, make it just a dead letter drop in a hymn book in the chapel. I don't th oh my god if if Merlin's disguised as a fucking goat dude again who like bumps into them and like one of them just has a letter on him is that what you're talking about like oh I see you're back from Sarum blah 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 how's it going um here's a bunch of letters yeah Hmm. I do think the idea the idea that the party gets the letter is definitely the thing that just how they get the letter is the hard part is Merlin going to be in every year no that's the thing yeah like Merlin like I don't Merlin okay Merlin solves this problem okay no questions asked fucking wizard shit solves the problem the thing that I don't want to do is over rely on Merlin because I think Merlin's appearances are special. And having Big Papa Merlin bail them out isn't necessarily the thing that I want to do. Is this person's funeral should be a big set piece? Um it's a servant. I don't think it's a I don't think it's a, a very big funeral. It's a servant to Glessig, the pious who died. But the thing is though. When some of your house dies in the hospitality of another house, that's when you're like, something's, you, need, you need to tell me what's going on. And really, the answer is that Marjorie will never, will, will not admit what's going on. And so they're like, fine, if you won't tell me what's going on, then we're going to fight. 
Like, that's the answer. The answer is that Majory won't admit what's going on publicly. The thing is, though, the players will have the letter. Um, you gotta fight for your right to par. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I make I make no no secret of it. What's really cool about this is that um, it's my intentions in the age of Arthur uh, that Arthur um, and um, what's his name, Arthur Lancelot and Guinevere are a polycule. Like that's gonna be that side of things and the conflicts of that um and this basically the same problem of who in a polycule who inherits in a system set up like this is impossible that's the reason and so that's why like arthur and people you have to pretend to be a monogamous because it th it th completely screws up inheritance because that's just the way it is and so you have to put on the facade and so that's that's like the thing that I want to do. And so like this is this is a similar story, only it's done in the age of Uther. Um, there's something you know. There's someone who knows all the secrets and listens to a confession. God, dude, if the priest if the priest has a letter. Oh shit! Oh shit! If they meet a priest, do they meet a priest or do they meet a druid? Is they a heckin' pagan? I thought this... Yeah, I mean, they are a pagan. So druids don't do confessions. So the druid's just holding it. So the druid just has the letter. That's that's who has the letter. And that's that's the person... Yeah, the druid is the one who gives it to him. But why, why would the druid give them a letter? Because obviously the druid trusts them to do the right thing. It's the same thing that a wizard would do. Um... Or maybe maybe the druid says, "I was told to give you this," um, like in like a like a fade dreamlike way. Why would he have it? He would have it because I don't think that I guess then the druid, is, the druid's the one who ordained the polycule, I guess, right? Like they blessed him in secret, right? They're the they're the bishop in Romeo and Juliet. They got him married or whatever. And so maybe the letter's gone. Maybe they just have a proof of it. I don't know. Uh, I like that the druid had a dream. I like that too. I like the vision. Well, what I would say is that I think the druid would say, I had a vision of the three-eyed giant and he told me to give you this. And that's to Erwin. And Erwin's like, what the fuck? Because the goat and the and the giant are, are like Erwin's spirit guides for the rest of this game i think because the idea is that we're doing like real 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 like hush hush spooky face shit like that what's actually real is hard to tell obviously we had like someone dressed up as like a doulahan and whether that's actually the doulahan or not uh is a question but like this face stuff and when merlin shows up this is all stuff that's like very dreamlike and so you don't know um per se and so the idea is when a druid's visited in a dream to give you this. And you're having these dreams privately. And then someone tells you like, oh, I, was, I had a dream about a character in your head that in your own dream. That that's that's weird. Uh, I'm into this. OK, 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 OK. This is what happens. OK. OK. The druid gives them the letter. I don't have to solve all of this right now. That's the other thing. I have a whole week to figure this out. The druid secret married them, and so he's on the inside. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking, Roger. That was my first thought. Is that the, And so that's why the druid has the letter. Um... We only have right now for amazing and valuable input. That's true. That is correct. Uh, but this is all really good stuff. And the thing is, though, that this is a soup, and I gotta let it. I gotta let it simmer for a while, and then I'll 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 I'll, I'll fix the stuff around. I'll workshop it a little bit, um, and come up with some good ideas here about how to make this work better, and like really hone in on these little details, right? 
yeah, I, I just I just come back to it. It's cookie. Yeah, it's not done. Exactly. Thank you all. Thank you all for 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 listening and and following along and know that like the stuff that I come up with, this is all just work in progress shit. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is really really good. This is really 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 good stuff. Okay. So then let's do let's do some other stuff here. Um I need to do the fall and winter events from this year. So we already pre-rolled. If we go to the winter phase, we're in the winter. I pre-rolled the weather. So weather is done. Weather is done. Um, I rolled a 17. The players, manorial luck-wise, rolled stuff. Colin rolled a 3 and a 3. And James rolled a 6 and a 4. So this is the part now. You're drawing these three nights now. Oh, you're the best. Thanks for hanging out, Kelsa. Now you now you understand this fucking wild shit that we're doing. Um, zero. Six and a four is a benefit in Age of Uther, manorial luck benefit, and a four is no conflict. Uh, I think. I just want to double check. Six is a benefit, a f conflict, a four. Nope, four is bandits. Oh, they got bandited. Bandits. The benefit bandits. Sounds bad. That sounds like. Reagan. Uh, let's see. D4 for the season. Happens in the fall. Uh, Erwin. Um, there we go. Bandits. We've seen what bandits do before. Um, and now let's go over to Colin, who got a three and a three. Normal luck. Three is a calamity. Uh, and manorial conflict. Three is bandits. Also got bandits. Uh, season of the bandits. D4. Spring. Okay, so I do that. Add another thing. So I guess before we do this happened before or after the relations table. This has to happen after the relations table. I need to organize all this shit again. So I guess I'm gonna put it here for now. Gareth. Uh let me find the rules for the bandits. Did before. I think I did the skirmish rules for Pan. Winter, spring, here's spring, summer. Uh, that's raid. Is that right? Bandits. If you had bandits this year, add 1d6 minus 1 to fate. If your knight was here, uh, roll to see if they were home. Reduce the damage. Roll 1d6 and subtract from property destruction. There was no property destruction and conflict rolls. Of course, not reduce them less to zero. Get 50 glory for defending their lands. Impress peasants. So, um, bandits. Foot soldiers, bandits. Here's bandits. We actually did a proper attack with them. Oh, we didn't do a thing. We did a proper attack with bandits. So we're going to do banditry. Um, do we actually want to do banditry as a mystery? 
I kind of want to do banditry as a mystery. I want some like men of the hood shit. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing some men of the hood shit. Um, no longer are they the ones getting attacked. Um, it's happening around them. Yeah, they're they're gonna have to solve it. Um. Two mysteries in one year. Yep. Um, so let's let's figure out this this bandit thing. Let's actually turn this into a game. Um, so rather than just a couple rolls, it's like a really simple mouse guard mission. Uh, the question here is that do they um do you, do you ambush them? Like, do you ambush bandits? You hunt. You have to hunt bandits. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this. Soul Adventures has me. Soul Adventures to the rescue. Uh, where are you? Where? Hideout. Prudent Valor Siege. Right? Patrol, Garrison, Fight, Skirmish, Conquest. No, it's Hideout. Now, where's the hunting one? There's something with bandits about hunting. Super good. Garrison. Fight? No. Is it hideout? Prudent Valor Siege? Bandit is 11. Oh, thank you. There we go. Aware, hunting, and recognize. This is what I needed. Um, generic didn't catch all of them. There's a knight in there's a knight involved. Lovkamagus is striking again. Here's the thing. Is it Lev Kamagus or is it Lady Elaine? D2. Uh, one is Lev Kamagus. It's Lev Kamagus. It's not Lady Elaine. Uh, cool. Um, so, knights cover their emblems in soot. And... Attack traitors on the road to Levcomagus. I should say a knight. Uh, bandits and one knight cover their um who covers their emblem. Let's roll up the knight. Nigh. Sexy, fair, arbitrary. Honor is 21 in singing. Uh, would, an, would a really honorable knight be the one raiding? Not really sure about that. I don't, I don't know if that's true. But that's pretty funny. Um, they are sexy and they are fair. I like Nigh. Sir Nye the science guy. Sheriff Silchester. I need an old English um map of Silchester. And dragon map of Silchester.
Nope, it's just Love Camagus and Silchester. Nothing. Nothing at all. Nope, this is all not not great. Nope. I don't think I'm gonna get anything here. Philchester, Winchester, Love Camagus. Nope, I'm not gonna get anything for names of manners. I'm just gonna have to look at Logris and, and extrapolate. Sorry. So we get I mean Alton, Coombe, like they're all like pretty pretty classic English names. So we're just gonna do a holding Vagon and we're gonna just work on Vagon and turn it into a new name. Uh the place is Ogner. There we go. I don't know. It's a town of Ogner. They're never in a, they're ne they're only gonna know the heraldry if they ace if they ace recognize. Because there's no way of knowing. Uh you know how would you know a random Silchester house? Um success would mean that oh it is a knight of Silchester. Uh you just don't know what house it is. Um cool, so bandit, knight. Uh but what does success and shit look like in bandits of eleven? Bandits of eleven. Um uh, okay. Nineteen is a fight. Nah, we're actually doing we're not gonna roll that and we're doing a proper fight. Proper fight. Uh, so let's do this. Um, one success. Oh, here. Uh, one success, two success, and three success. One success is uh, you find their camp, but they've disembarked. Um, the thing on bandits is, no, um, a crit is that a fumble is you roll on the fumble table. There's a comma. There's actually a comma if you zoom in. I'm just not good. There's, see, there's actually a comma. Um, so, so, oh, we have to, I need a zero success. The zero success is you find nothing. Uh, I think I think this is Lost in the Woods. I need to just roll Lost in the Woods, which is in the core book. So scenarios. Oh, it's under something else. Lost in the woods. Into the woods. Oh, damn it. Okay, I have to put up on a second screen so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, so it's a d20. 16. A 16 is a friendly village. Let's look at map of Logris. Idea. So we're talking about Winterborn Gunnet. I guess it's going to be Idmiston. It comes from Freyd's lands. Idmiston. It's the Blackberry Patch. They find them. You follow follow them back to the Blackberry Patch. Oh, that's fucking good. So now it's going to think that Edmiston is doing it. 
and that that is Sir Freyd. He's going to think that it's Sir Freyd. Um, probably seems, uh, or maybe. Um, oh, this is okay, 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 okay. Uh, number one is one success. Um, you find the Blackberry patch. Towards Silchester. Two successes. Um, one night, three bandits. Awesome. Okay, that's the play. That's how I'm doing it. That's how I set it up. So it's kind of like a skill check, a skill challenge, right? Um, so if you completely whiff it, you're gonna find that going through the Blackberry patch, you're gonna, you're gonna think that's Edmiston, and that's all you get. If you get one success, then you're able to know that the trail continues past Edmiston. If you get two successes, um, you follow the trail, uh, and you actually catch up to them in camp. Um, however, they already have begun to disembark, and they are ready. Um, for a fight and a three is the that but even more successful so like a controlled so rather than a risky position a controlled position uh, where they're you're ambushing them cool so a lot of stuff this needs to happen at some point this needs to happen probably before classic the pious stuff um tinger setting up a toll and Sir Freyd become, I don't know. Wow, so so a lot of stuff about Sir Freyd this year too. Uh, this doesn't even get to Erwin. I haven't even gotten to Erwin shit. Erwin, um, the Standing Stones, three Meniers. Known as blue stones. Been known since that sarsen stones came from Marlborough. Are sandstone, but and a variety of smaller igneous rocks known as blue stone. Oh, so this it's sandstone. Okay. Oh, three meniers. Um, I was writing up the the stuff for Gareth's bandits attacks wreckage. Uh, so that's what you missed. I just wrote up a skill challenge for them. Uh, for this specific skill challenge, I wanted to not use the bandits, uh, solo event, sp uh, specifically, like exactly what it says. Um, because I want this to actually maybe lead into more play. Uh, but I I don't know where this will lead to. Um. In my head right now, I'm immediately thinking like, well, if they capture, if you capture a knight of Silchester, that's money. Uh, that stuff, that's that's immediately awesome. Like Roderick caught Sir Blaine's being an idiot. Super nice. Um, but uh, who knows? I'm doing Sir Irwin stuff right now. Uh, Sir Irwin wants to continue working and improving these these standing stones. Uh, that he has on his property. Um, so the thing that I want to hear is, uh, I came up with this idea for flowers. Oh, here's a couple things, actually. Um, this Irwin, uh, the Irwin's gift this year was builders owe 
Erwin a favor. Uh, two dollar to an improvement. Oh. So he can just start spending money on an improvement uh, after the standing stones for free. Uh, so I came up with a legend. And so here's the thing. Um, the standing stones are, are going to begin to grow uh, this spring. Uh, the area around the stones blooms uh, with red flowers. Oh, flowers. There we go. So I came up with a legend. I, I used Forbidden Lands to in invent a legend about these flowers. Because I want to do Mythic Botany. Um, I really like when flowers have a significance. And I rolled them up, and I got, uh, rather than like the Forbidden Lands time zone stuff, I just equated it roughly to Brit Brit Britain history. And I got the Roman occupation era. So that's like 500 years ago. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, about 500, 400 something years ago. Around 60 AD is, is where I'm thinking. Uh, there was a treacherous queen who sought a weapon because of dreams and traveled to a farm about a day's march away in the Quagmire Northwest and was murdered there uh, and was murdered. Uh, there's a lost war chest and starved iron guards. This last part, I don't think is that important about them dying and stuff. But I think that the treacherous queen who sought a weapon from their dreams is the is the, really the important part. Um, well, maybe maybe and was uh attempted murdered is that the idea? Anyways, the idea is that I want these letters to have a pagan significance, and it goes back to this ancient queen. And I think this ancient queen is actually Boudicca. Uh, because that fits the timeline. So it's going to be about Boudicca. Uh, who's a uh, Celtic leader. Gaelic leader. I think they're the Gaels at that point. Uh, so this is called... Uh... Oh, uh, is it called Boudicca's... The Qu Queen's Lament. Uh, I'm going to come up with multiple legends based on the religion that you're in. So, for example, the Romans, the Romans have a different one. Um, the Romans believe that this flower has a completely different significance. They believe something like uh, those those flowers only grow where Roman blood has been spilt on the soil. Um, the queen's flowers only grow where there was treachery. So whenever there is treachery afoot, um, that's when those flowers can, will grow. Um, or lies, specifically lies, deceit. Like true deceit. Um, and so I think, I think I want these flowers to like involve the trait of honesty. And that picking up, if you believe, so like the, the flowers don't actually have this ability. Like this is just something that's totally in your character, like your character stuff. Yeah, Theos, I know, true deceit. Okay. Um, this is something that plays with the superstition part of the game that I'm really into. Uh, I think I think it's like you project supernatural things onto things. Like That's part of the world. And so what I think what happens here is um, you have to have an honesty score of, of a certain amount to properly pick a flower if you believe in the pagan myths of the Queen's Laments. Um, if you are a Roman or believe in the Roman myth, then these letters require a vengeance amount about like the you know, Roman blood uh, so like that's that's what I'm doing. Um like depending on what you think of what you think is true, that requires a certain trait role. Otherwise something happens. Like um if you aren't if you don't have the honesty score, I think uh I think you might have a feeling to reveal a a, a secret. Right? Like you can't you feel like you're not worthy to pick up the thing and so you will say like something that you've been keeping secret 
Um, if you aren't vengeful, what happens? You pick a flower. It's a good question. The traits. Vengeful and merciful. You deny mercy. You deny mercy the first time. What's another word for truth? Something that lets you see between truth and lies. What's something, what's something that reads or define or determines or rides the lines of truth and lies scrutinizing verity yeah i think i think i think i think it yeah verity thank you that's the word you all y'all are great uh the so the flower is called so the to, to pick as they call it the queens of verity that's great um and the romans one i guess is avenger i don't know this is the, i'm not i'm not the best with the names Uh, honesty. So um, here's the thing that I'm thinking of and why this is important. Um, I'm not just coming up for the sake of this. I want the party to meet Praetor Sagarius again, Diagoras again. Uh, I only mentioned him in passing, like one session at a feast. But I want, I want them to know what it's like. Yeah, like a bloodthirst. Yeah. Bloodthirst, blo like a blood, bloodthirst blossom. I don't know. That sounds super fucking corny. That's some Dragon Age shit right there. Whatever. Uh, blood thistles. A little better. I don't know. Give me a Latin word. Sanguine something. Yeah. Um, thing with carnage, carnation. Uh, thing. I mean, what's Latin for blood flower? Low sanguine. No. I mean, Vindica. Vindica is pretty good. So it's either called Verity, like the Queen's Verity, or Vindica, uh, depending on where you're from. But few. Um, I mean, picking, denying mercy, going into that blood feud, it would be very interesting. Um, There it is. Uh, so let's look at the Great Pendragon campaign. Uh, Forty-eight. There's that's this is the guy, Praetor Siagrius. Um, wonderful. Let's say to help Praetor Siagrius. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, this is yeah. This is about um, the invasion. Yeah, it's that we're we're literally invading the the continent. But this is this actual invasion. All of this stuff is going to happen the second session. The invasion, everything is all done for next year, or for in the fall, I should say. Yeah, this is all this is all good, but this is all going to be done. 
Yeah, I know. This doesn't really help me. I could do the Water Leaper stuff, but again, I don't like the idea of introducing fairy creatures any more than I already am. So this doesn't really help me, actually. The only thing that really helps me here is I need to play up something with Praetor Siagrius. Um, the idea here is that Praetor... Praetor has been... Uh, see, sorry, I should say Praetor. That's like saying king. King has been... Uh, Siagrius has been going around asking, trying to get support, trying to get volunteers from Logris to join him in reclaiming uh, parts of his Frankish kingdom in, in for Rome. Uh, that's that's the big thing that that Siagrius wants. So it, he's been here for years, and now finally, uh, looks like Badoc is going to help them uh, lead an army into France. And so they have the choice of, so then the players will have a choice to either stay in Britain under the king or go to the continent under Prince Maynock. Um, hmm. I don't know. It's okay, though. Oh, does he request hospitality? At Irwin's at Childerton? Is that how that happens? How do they get them? How do I get the party to bump into Praetor? How, how to bump into Siagrius? Yeah, Siagrius is a Roman official. Uh, he's a Roman general or a Roman general king. Um, what funeral? Thorns of Vindica. Yeah, Thorns of Vindica. That's hella good. Hmm. Siagras is Marjorie's place recruit. Is that Marjorie's place recruiting when the mystery is going on? Someone did die. A, a, a good for nothing peasant died. Literally, like an aide, uh, less, an, a, a simple aide to a knight died. No one of any consequence. A commoner. They are a commoner. Uh, and therefore have no honor. And therefore have no rights. They certainly wouldn't get a funeral. But their death does drive two knights to actually fight. Um... Raids child's christening. That's interesting. Hmm. Kind of like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Raids. Child, who is Eldred? No. Afraid son. Hadlow. Um, I just want them to get to know, like, what it's like to be around someone who's Roman, because uh, I feel like they're they are truly different than than us. Um, so it's 
So th the ideas that I want to emphasize is that uh, Siagrius is hella smart. Um, books on Britain, botany, and butterflies. Um, in Latin. Uh, legends, myths, field notes, etc. He's a well-learned man. Uh, he he really relies on the written word. Um, I asked if it was like with a church. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, no, he's been. He is he is official. He is officially Roman and he's been recognized as officially Roman and shows up with about like 30 men in England or in Britain, specifically Logris, and has been asking people to be like, "Hey, who wants to help me retake my this great city?" I think it's Paris. It's like literally, "Who wants to help me retake Paris from the Franks?" Who who the the Frankish barbarian horde. Okay. So I I'm into this. This is good. This is good. This is a good start for our game. So now we have, uh, oh, the feast. I, I have not written up the feast. So let's do the feast. I mean, hell, this could, this could happen. This could just be the Easter feast. This could be a pre, pre feast. Um,. Let's write up the Easter feast. Four. Uh, my previous feasts, I did guest gossip and bullshit. So I will follow that pattern. Where is this feast taking place? It's taking place in wherever the Great Pendragon campaign says it is. Winchester. Uh, I'm gonna say on the road to the feast, actually. On the road to the feast, so we'll have a, we'll have a moment of of traveling on the road. The Praetor be seated. Uh, yeah, Praetor sits at the high table for sure. Super into that salt. Cool. So on the road to the feast, they can meet Praetor Syagrus and have those kind of moments and have some sort of lore, um, possible checks to fairy lore, folklore, um, battle. Etc. Uh, guess. It's Maynock. Merlin's not there. It's, uh, oh, held in Winchester. Where is Winchester? Sorry, I keep like jumping around just to know what I'm doing. Uh, Winchester, 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 Winchester. Like, saying it multiple times means I'll find it. Well, it's not down in Cornwall. Winchester. Here's all the Chesters. A bunch of Chesters down here. Oh, more Chesters. But that's Sussex, and Sussex is run by Saxons.
I have no idea where it is. Further north. Is it up in Lindsay? I'm not seeing it. Uh, it looks like it's in Logris. It looks like it's south of Silchester. Like somewhere around Hampshire? Portchester, Silchester. Chester. Chester. Why is this not on the... <laughs> that is an extremely good question. I have no idea why it's not here. Oh. Make it, I'll make a note for myself. That's fine. Let's just get the rest of the guests. A great Pendragon campaign, Praetor, Brit the British Army. Okay. Not sure what that is. Just, just the whole goddamn army. Let's do some gossips. I'm gonna copy some gossips from the previous years. Like a boar with golden tusks prowls the Purdue forest. This actually gets. Oh, geez. Oh, I forgot. I had this rumor. This is why Glessig was on our shit last time. Um, Sir Glessig the Pious was accused of cheating at dice. Or actually did cheat. And was caught at, at, at involving a farmer. Winchester is south of Love Comagus. Do I just have... Am I just looking at two... My two zoomed out? It's not here. It's not in. On the other map, east. It's on another one. That's fair. This is the player map in the back of the book. I'm sure there's other maps. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll just find it later. Um... Let's do... We'll do more rumors about the Saxons. That seems right.
talk about f the gossip that I'm reading in the Great Pen Dragon campaign. Uh, well, yeah, wonderful, I say, to help. You know, wonderful for Praetor Siagrius. Wonderful, I say, to help Praetor Siagrius. By God, the cause is so just. That's something that would say at a feast. Good. good for him. Good for him. Uh, four. Back to the book. Any new comments? Duke. Oh, Cornwall. Yeah. Is this a thing in Pendragon that Cornwall never shows up? Yes. Definitely. Especially early on. Yep. Cornwall's just uh, a jerk. Okay, so that's good. I'm I'm foreshadowing the big old uh invasion raid. I don't think I'm gonna give the players the choice to not do the raid next session or two sessions from now. I think I think that's just gonna be a concession. I think it's too fun. Any chance to crit them both? Not sure what you mean. Um, let's see. Tinger's thing definitely go on as as a gossip. Gossip thread. Boop. Uh, seven's got to be about frayed. Cool. And then I'll just roll some more to figure out what number eight is. But I think that's when that's where I'm going to stop today, y'all. Uh, two and a half hours of prep. Uh, so much juiciness. Uh, this is a good this is a good way to spend my Wednesday. Uh, I can't get over I can't get over this fray to Lady Grade becoming a a nun. That's just incredible to me. Oh yeah, I definitely I prep I prep maybe like five times more than I actually play. But that's what makes this game I think really really good. It's one of those things where the prep is extremely rewarding. Like I could show up and just run this game, right? I could show up and run this game and it'd be fine. But the fact I'm putting so much time into this plan and creating these sort of outlines for this game. 
I think it really, really, really shows, honestly. I think this shows, um, well, Wreckage, Wreckage says we're very different DMs. I don't prep nearly as much when I have a game that runs for four hours or so. But when I run a game for two hours, I prep a lot like this, and then I have to like figure out how to shrink it down into those hours. Like I spend so much of this time, um, like I have to think about what I need to cut, uh, that what gets cut on the floor, right? What gets left on the cutting room floor? Because uh, I, I just have such little amount of time. Uh, so it makes me actually over prep. Yeah, exactly. So I end up having to be more tight, and by being more tight means I have to over prep. Um, it's it's really weird how that works, but that's it's how it does. Um, Logros forty five map, Google it. That's fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll find that copath. Thank you. But it's in Logros. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Pen Arbalan also says Pendragon seems to just have all the detail worth preparing. Uh, that's also very true. Uh, I love this game takes care of me when it comes to prep. It gives you so much source material, suggestions. It gives you, or at least other players have come up with those random solo tables. And just just making it all work together just creates these amazing evocative stories. Um, but then I, 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 would, I would be remiss, though, that some of my ideas certainly come from other actual plays of this game. I wouldn't use the word railroad, but that's kind of what it is. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a railroad in the same way that, like, Curse of Strahd's a railroad. You're going to follow the same sort of path of events. But the thing is, though, it's an outline. It's not guaranteed. This, this session, I don't have to do this Franklin thing, this Franklin invasion. Like, I don't have to do that this year. I could just make up whatever the fuck I want. Um, like, it's so it is a railroad, but it's like, yeah, Band of Blades. It's, it's like Band of Blades, yeah. Where there are certain events where it's like, well, you're playing Pendragon, so you should definitely like include these moments, like getting Excalibur. Uh, playing this game and not including Excalibur, like the the player knights getting Excalibur, would be kind of fucked up. But you know, if you wanted to skip the battles, you probably could. Yeah, we could just do garrison duty. Um, this is where watching other people's actual plays of this game has been super eye opening to me. Uh, specifically, um, not not so much on Twitch, but. Uh, there's a really good game on on forums. Like a lot of people play Pendragon via play by post. Uh, for for obvious reasons, like he's, it's a lot of a lot of it's very procedural. So like I am I'm super into this, and I've been reading these ones, especially on the Shut Up and Sit Down forums, where this guy goes really more into these investigations and mysteries and histories of ideas, and I've been using a, like I've been I've been reading that and like farming it and putting it into my brain for for other ideas for for this game. Uh, so, like, all of that stuff kind of all just blends together. I treat it all as prep. It's just all prep to me. But, uh, yeah, I don't... Um, anyone can... You can run Pendragon in just multitudes of different ways and just focusing on what, what's interesting to you. Right now, to tell you the truth, I probably have too many things that are interesting to me. Like, I'm too much interested in the Feast deck and doing the Feast, even though they take up, like, 45 minutes of my session. Um, I want to do more battles in the second... In the second uh, the book of battle, but those take like an hour right now. And we don't really know how to do that shit. Other DMS. Yeah. Other DMS would like play with way, way more like face stuff, uh, and ignore some of the politics. Um, other, other DMS would do nothing but politics, right? There's so many things like, there's so many ways to take it and, and lenses of the game. You're like, yes, you're right. It is the same object, but the way you look at the object makes the game completely different. Um, if, if, for example, the random rolls meant that my players got, like, the chestnut destriers super early on horses that are incredible, well, then, you know what, maybe we're playing the, the, the horse breeding minigame, where they're trying to find, you know, the, the mare or, or, like, a stud version of that horse that they have, so they can breed them and keep them going, and then, like, that's the game, like, you know, there's so many ways that you can, like, dig into it, but, yeah, this is, like, yeah, I don't know. You like full on Fey campaign? Yeah, um, I think I think the Fey is incredibly hard. I agree with you. That's uh, that's it's it's why I avoid it. To tell you to tell you the truth, all of our players are are super more into this idea that the Fey and and the spiritual is left for songs. It's left for after the moments. 
it's what gets tacked on after certain things and and the rest of it's all just kind of like i don't know is that a dream it's supposed to be very soft so you go hard in the politics i want to go hard in the politics too um, and that's what i'm going to be doing later on like the banditry and stuff with sir blaine's is the beginning of it this is not the the end all be all of of the stuff with sir blaine's that that dial is just beginning to to turn up uh, and slowing the game down from just doing just greatest hits of the year is letting me hit that, right? It's letting me, it, it affords me the time so that we can have those moments of when traveling, what's it like when you get closer to the border of Silchester? And you can see that that border is more porous and less defined and it's contested. Like that, there's a couple towns that might be blocked that might change hands here and there uh, based on just posture of armies and stuff. Uh, you know, there's way more pol political things we can do. Um, you can play almost with all with a bunch of religion stuff. There's so many ways. Yeah. So part of part of why I run these solo things for random NPCs is to create this sort of intrigue. I mean, you just saw it today, right? We spent an hour coming up with this intrigue about a murder with uh, this polycule family that's never been on screen before and to explain why Glessig the Pious is in a blood feud. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, we haven't even gotten into the stuff with like what Lady Elaine's trying to plan with uh with Sir Gareth, because like Lady Elaine and Sir Gareth don't really like each other. They don't really see eye eye to eye to each other. Lady Elaine thinks she got swindled marrying uh Sir Gareth, and Sir Gareth is like riding a bull, uh, because Lady Elaine is not playing Pendragon. Lady Elaine is playing Crusader Kings too. And it's going to marry her way and kill her way to the top. So it's like, how do you make that work? It's fun. Okay. Uh, well, anyways, I think that's going to do it for me today. I got to, I got to, this, I'm, gonna, I'm just kind of getting drained doing all this Pendragon for two and a half hours right now, all this prep. So I'm going to, I'm going to let it go for now. I'm going to, I'm going to do the checklist next time and add female names next time. I just might I might not do that on stream. I'll just do that anyways. Um yeah, Lady Lady Elaine is absolutely a Burning Wheel character. Like <laughs> you could play Burning Wheel Pendragon for sure. I'm looking, Kelso. What? Anyways, I hope Oh. Oh my god. You already started it. Okay, okay. You are amazing. This has already started. I, I hope she doesn't mind that I'm I'm just throwing it on screen here. But like this is this is awesome. Look at this. What the hell? That's so great. Damn, that's so good. Look at that shit. Oh, I can't wait. This is this is super great, everybody. All right, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, this the actual game will be year forty eight will be Mondays at four p.m. Uh, I put up the VODs either the Tuesday day after or or even that night. Um, so so you will always have a chance to watch it. In the meantime, um, thank you all so much and uh, hope to see you all around. So 